So this is the Karloff Frankenstein mold. I'm actually casting one right now. So right now I am brushing in latex. And I'm brushing it into the face. I poured a bunch in there. I'm just gonna work it in all the little areas. And then I'm gonna pour the excess back into the bucket. Whoa, you're focused. All right, now that they're both painted in with latex, I'm gonna now spray some water in there to pop some of the bubbles. Okay, the mold pieces are strapped together. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my chip brush and I'm gonna just, I like to just paint, fill in that seam, make sure that it has latex covering it. So I'm gonna do that and put the camera down. So now, I'm not gonna dwell, I don't like, I don't know, this, I don't even have enough latex on hand to fill this mold in let it dwell. So I'm just going to do a slush uh, cast. So I'm just going to fill this with some latex about halfway, slush it around and pour it right out and let it drain. I moved the mold to this table. So I did my, I poured latex in, I slushed it around, I drained it. So now I have, this is, and it's drained already so it's just drying and it looks like it's already getting nice and it's setting already, this is great. So I should be able, you know, and I'm not gonna pour another layer of latex in that until it's set a little bit more, but it's drying pretty quick, this is great. So the first uh, coat was setting up pretty quick, so this is great. So I have some more latex in the mold, and I, as you can see, I've been slushing it around, covering, because I don't have enough to fill the mold. So I'm slushing it around, I'm gonna drain it now, and let that dry, this is, uh, this, uh, Latex is really working great today. It's really setting up quick. Nice. Drying is pretty good, but I think, I think I'm gonna put one more pour of latex in this mold, and that should be enough. I think I have three in there now, but I like a nice thick mold, a uh, thick lat mask, so I'm gonna do one more right now. So I just poured some latex in, and since I don't have enough to fill the mold, uh, I'm going to slosh it around. As you can see, I wear my nicest clothing when I'm working with latex stains. So I'm moving this mold around, moving the latex to the edge so I can get it all around before I drain it. It's going to be really careful. It dripped a little bit on my hand. No big deal. It happens. And then after I do this and cover everything, I will drain it back into the bucket. Looks like we are getting pretty dry in there. Still looks a little bit uh, white, but uh, the outer spot here is getting nice and golden. So I think we should be ready to take this out of the mold maybe later today or early tomorrow. All right, this Frankenstein monster, Karloff monster is done. I just powdered. I'm just moving some more powder around here. And I'm going to take them out of the mold. All right. We're going to take the monster out of the mold. Hopefully the camera won't fall over because I have it leaning up against something. All right. Hopefully I got a good pull out of this. Whoa. Whoa. And there goes the camera. There we go, we're back. We're back, ladies and gentlemen. Back half of the mold on the floor. All right, now, here we go. Gently release him. Alright. Don't want the camera to fall down, it's the phone to fall down again. Good, good, good so far. Everything got into the, all the crevices and, and he's about to come out. Alright, and there he is. It's alive!
Looks good to me. All right. All right, now, now that he's out of the mold, what I'm gonna do is, because he needs to cure, I took a piece of, your, uh, this is like uh, from Home Depot, the foam, which I cut, sponge rubber, which I cut into a piece, and I put it on the, to fit the top of his head, so it'll keep the flat head flat. And now I have polyfill, which I got, you know, you can get on Amazon, it's not expensive, and I'm stuffing the mask with the polyfill because I want to leave it out for 24 hours to air cure, but I want it to keep its shape. I don't want it to be floppy. Even though it's four coats thick, I want it to keep its shape so it cures in the shape I want it to. So that should be good, I think. Whoa. Yes. All right, I'll take my motorcycle oil can thingy and I'll put to the poly foam, the uh, foam rubber, the Home Depot upholstery foam. Is, let me put a light on here. It'll look better. Off on the side. Okay. So he's out of the mold. He's gonna this is too much light. That's better. All right, so he's got to stay out for like 24 hours and uh, let him cure. I have three, I'm actually working on, th whoa. I'm actually working on three Karloff monsters here. But right now I'm at the stage where I trimmed And uh, now I'm going to use this Dremel, and I'm going to uh, trim down the edges here so I get a nice edge. What I love about this thing is the felt tip. Can you see that? Too much light? That's better. These edges are not horrible, but with the Dremel, I'll be able to uh, bring them down. So, I mean, look how nice that, what a difference. So I'm gonna do all three of these right now, fix up the edges. So I'm about ready to paint, I'm all set up. Got the mask. Now for this particular mask, uh, the main flesh color, I'm using, um, this is a paint from Motion Picture Studios, Nightshades, this is called infected and also I mix it with um, fright white and I basically go seven milliliters of infected and six milliliters of fright white to make the uh, shade I like and I have it already mixed in the cup I already weighed it out um, so now I'm gonna mix it and add a little bit of water because it's a little too thick all right and now I'm gonna begin painting And since this is very boring, I'm going to turn the phone off now. All right, got a little bit of paint on there. It's starting to get some color. I'm going to add some more. All right, now we're getting nice and covered. I'm not going to just paint the, where the hair is going to go. I'm going to paint that black because there's no sense in putting flesh color where there's going to be hair. In fact, putting black paint where the hair is going to be is going to help hide any places where maybe I don't put the hair on thick enough. All right, well, these three all have their uh, base colors put on them. Uh, so I'm gonna let that dry a little longer, and then I'm gonna move on. So the next uh, thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I mixed up some 
a black acrylic paint, very watery, nothing thick. And I'm gonna basically paint black watery acrylic paint on these masks. Just put it on really quickly. And I'm gonna basically stain it so I get it in all the texture and grooves. And then I'm gonna wipe a lot of it off and just leave the black stain um, in those areas. I, I really like that effect. It has like a, almost like a dirty, I don't know, like an organic type of filthy, dirty look. It doesn't look so nice and crisp and smooth and clean. Okay, so I just did this one and it's completely covered in watery black paint. And now I'm going to remove a lot of the paint and I'll show you what I got after I do that. See, as you can see, I'm using a paper towel and I'm, I'm just blotting some areas up. Taking, leaving some of the stain, so I'm leaving some of it on there because I like this this great dirty look. It's really cool. Okay, so the one on the left is done. And just to show you the difference, the only difference between these two are, the only difference between these two masks is this one I did the watery black wash and wiped it off, and this one I haven't yet. And if you can, it, it just adds, I think, so much character to the, uh, you know, and it still has a lot of work to go on the painting, but, and it's, it's still wet, but I just love, let me get this sharper here. I just love the way, compare like the mouth and all that to just, you know, it's just very nice and smooth. All the detail, all the texture I sculpted in comes out so much more. I just think it's such a cool looking effect. So I'm gonna do the other two now. Okay, so these are all stained now and they're drying. And uh, I just think they look so cool with that stain on them. You know, it looks better in person, not in this video. But anyway, these are gonna dry. I still have a lot of painting to go. All right, so where we are now is, I painted the tops of the masks black, where the hair is gonna go. I painted the bolts, the bolts and the clamps and the stitches. Um, painted them white first and let that dry. Then I did the metallic silver on top. You can see, they look better like that. And I painted some uh, light gray in the eyes to start those off. Next step is to paint the eyes. Um, behind these three masks, I have the old, the original, this, that's the finished mask. That's the master with the hair. That's, that's how these are gonna look when they're done. So I still have to paint the eyes and I'm gonna paint the um, eyelids and the uh, eye bags a little bit darker too. All right, these guys are ready for hairing. They are completed. Uh, I painted the eyes and uh, after I painted them, I applied some um, epoxy to give them that nice permanent shine. So as you can see here, So this, they're gonna look like him after I'm done with the herring. So, on to herring. It is finally time to hair these masks and be done with this Karloff monster mask already. So I have these three I'm gonna hair. I'm just gonna do one at a time because I can't hair three masks at once. So I have my, I use Mod Podge for uh, gluing the hair on. I like this stuff because it dries really slowly, so I don't have to rush. It, basically, I let it dry overnight. So I have uh, my hair, which I get from a place called the Woolery in Kentucky. And this is the black hair that I'll be using. Um, and it is alpaca roving. That's the type of hair. Thewoolery.com. Check it out. They're very helpful. So I have my Mod Podge, I have a brush, my scissors, and my masks. All right, so I have some hair that I cut, and my Mod Podge. And let me straighten this camera out, okay. And I got a little bit of Mod Podge in a cup and a brush. So, I mean, this is the way I hair a mask. There's not that much information online that I could ever find, so I kind of had a take what I saw and do it the way that works best for me. So, 
And I always start at the back of the head and I paint the Mod Podge basically starting at the bottom here. Just gonna paint a bunch. Gonna just painting a stripe on the bottom, the nape of the neck. And I dripped a little bit. I'll just wipe it off. Whatever. It dries clear anyway, so. Anyway, I'm painting that on. Good. All right. Now, I'm going to take some hair, and I'm going to separate it. So I don't want to put too much on at once, because I need to have just enough to cover the area where I put the glue. And I'll spread it out like that. Turn this so you can see that. And I'm just going to do that for the entire length of the area where I painted. Herring masks is something I don't really look forward to because it's time consuming, but it's worth it because, you know, hair, some masks need, characters need hair. I mean, I could do a Frankenstein monster that has no hair, like he's burned at the end of Bride of Frankenstein and put a little bit of, like a little bit of singed hair on him, but I like the classic Frankenstein monster with a full head of hair. So I'm putting that on, hair there. Bit more there. So that is one bit. Now, let me make the camera a little closer here. I'm now going to paint glue on top of the edge, like a you know quarter of an inch, because what I placed on there just putting it onto the wet stripe of glue is not going to hold, that's just kind of to hold it in place. This is going to hold the hair, it's gluing the hair to the latex. This is going to really adhere it. And it's time consuming. This could probably take me to do this head maybe an hour easily, if not longer. And I have to do three of these things. Okay, another update. So as you can see, I've done the front of the head, the hair going this way, even though the back of the hair is going this way. And now I'm working my way backwards. Let me go behind here. So now I'm starting putting hair here and I'm working my way back because on the monster, I want his hair on top to be flat going forward. So I'm going to continue this hair, laying it down going backwards till I get to here. This will be where the hair, I guess, hairline is where this, right when at the back of the head, the hair here will be, going, will be combed forward, but everything else will go down. It'll make sense when it's all done. So right now, that's where he is. All right, well, this guy is completely haired. Now, obviously, he looks like he's a hippie because he's got so much hair on his head. But when the glue is dry tomorrow, overnight, I will, re re you know, and of course it's got this big, you know, bunch of glue right there. Um, but it's gonna look a lot different when I'm all done with it tomorrow. Anyway, I have to let it dry now. Anyway, um, it's early in the morning. Uh, the glue is dried, it's overnight, so the hair is dried. Now all this hair obviously looks ridiculous. So I'm going to go now and remove all the hair that isn't glued in. You know, I put a lot of hair on this thing and the glue didn't get everything. So I'm gonna gently go with my hand and gently move my fingers through it and all the hair that isn't attached will just come off. Then I will style them hair and model it. And I have my 
hairspray, and uh, use a little bit of Vaseline for the tips in front of the hair here. So I'm going to do that now. All right, so now, it took me a few minutes, but I just basically, um, you know, moved my hands through the hair and pulled out all the uh, hair that wasn't glued on. Now he looks like he's, uh, you know, at the beach. So now, all I have to do is uh, model, you know, style the hair and push it down and use some uh, hairspray and everything, which I'm going to do now. All right, so. So what I'm going to do now is, very simple, just going to basically give him a hairstyle, haircut, whatever. So, you know, I'm just going to, the hair on the front obviously goes forward. I don't have to cut some hair off, I mean, and model it. So hey, see, some st there's still some hair that's coming loose that wasn't glued on right. Okay. See already it's starting to look better because it's not all, you know, poofy and everything. But I'm gonna do this for a few minutes to get the hair flatter. Um, right now I'm going to go through, I'm still going to try to get all this, you know, these little, you can't see them, but I mean, lots of little hairs that are just, I, you know, I don't want any hair on this thing that isn't glued on, so I'm going to go through with my fingers, and, and any other excess hair that isn't attached, I'm just going to get rid of. Okay, so there he is, all the excess hair has been removed, and I flattened the uh, hair with my hand. So he looks pretty good. Let me go around here. But now, move this light. He looks pretty good, except now I just have to put some hairspray on it. Because it's still very, you know, I mean, if I blow on this thing, you know, it does that, and I want it to be a lot stiffer. So I'm gonna hairspray it now and style it some more. And there he is, he's all done. I'll show you the hair. So. Used a little bit of Vaseline to get these tips to stay down and clump them up like that. Now all I have to do is we'll let the hairspray dry a little bit more and I have to trim a lot of this excess. I don't need the that much neck. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. See you later.